Hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. Alice and I are here in West Tawakoni, Texas, outside yes. of Dallas. And uh, for this, for this is our second study Session. from here. Uh, from here. Mm -hmm. And we're continuing on in our look at that beatitude where Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Matthew 5, 9. Before we start, I'm going to ask Alice if you'll, if you'll pray and ask God's blessing on our time Amen. together. I praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just bless your holy name. We thank you for the opportunity that you give us to be able to share the word, to study the word, and to grow in the word. We ask, Lord, that it will go forth and accomplish what you want it to Amen. do. We just praise you and thank you, Lord, for all that you do in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we started this last in our last session last week, and we were at that place where I was talking about the cross as a parable, talking about relationships, peace between men. And I yes. said, you know, I used the cross as an example because, it, you know, you, you picture the vertical part, mm -hmm. which is our relationship with God. That's the vertical, from man to God, right? Mm -hmm. Which supports that cross piece, man to man. And without that relationship with God, you'll never have a right relationship. You'll never have peace with man. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because Jesus is our peace. That's what it says. Paul said, he himself is our peace. No Jesus, no peace. Okay? I want to pick up kind of where we left off. I was talking about the fact that, uh, well, let me, let me say this, okay? Mm -hmm. We're talking about finding peace, yes. being peacemakers. Right. In 1994, Bill Clinton, the president of the United States at the mm -hmm. time, was involved in, and, and made a historic speech at the signing of the peace treaty between Israel, Yitzhak Rabin was there, right, mm -hmm. and Jordan with King Hussein. And Bill Clinton, a self-proclaimed Bible-believing Christian, made this statement in his speech. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall inherit the earth. That's not what it says. Well, you know, I, I just want to say this. Presidents do not make careless errors. No. Especially in their prepared and practiced speeches. Speeches that are always gone over and over mm -hmm. by the president before his delivery. They're written and checked by the president's aides. Mm -hmm. Right. Especially yeah. one as important as this was, yes. that was to be delivered by Bill Clinton. Like I said, a self-proclaimed Bible-believing Christian. So the idea is, why? Why, if, if that was not a careless error, and I, I by no means can bring myself to believe yeah. that. It was intentional. It was intentional. Why? Why was it like that? And I'm going to come back to that. Don't let me forget to come back to that. Okay. I also want to talk, talking about Israel. You know, the whole situation. When we talk about lack of peace, how about Israel and Palestine, mm. right? The Palestinian situation. Well, not long ago, Pope Francis visited the land of Israel. I'm talking about, this I guess was in, in May, the end of spring in May 2014. And he stopped first on his travels to the Holy Land. He stopped first to visit the Palestinians and then went over to Israel. And he, he invited Israeli President Shimon Peres okay. and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas to the Vatican where the three of them could pray together. Okay? Sounds very nice. Yes. To who? Or to whom? To whom, to whom would to they what? pray? Yes. Ha okay. Pope Francis told those Mideast leaders, and this is a direct quote, he said, I hope that this meeting 
will be a journey towards what joins us, to overcome what divides us. What divides the Roman Catholics, the Jews, and the Muslims? In a word, Jesus. That's right. It's a stumbling stone. How do you overcome the difference? I mean, that, that's what divides. Jesus Christ is a rock of offense over which men stumble, all right? Mm -hmm. if, if the Jews would accept Jesus, their promised Messiah, mm -hmm. and if the Muslims would repent of their error mm -hmm. and accept the gift of God's amazing grace and his salvation, right. well then, you know, there could be they peace could be, between them. They'd be praying to the same God. And they could pray to the same God. Mm -hmm. However, a Catholic who doesn't, you know, a, a Jew who doesn't believe in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, and a, and a Muslim who had best things that Jesus was just an ordinary man, a prophet, mm -hmm. how do they get together and pray with a, with a Roman Catholic? How do they do that? Who are they going to pray to? Right. They can't have any unity in their prayer. If there's no unity in their prayer, which there can't be, mm -hmm. there's not going to be peace. Because that is what divides him. And you can't overcome that which divides him. And then now, Bill Clinton said, they shall be called, they shall inherit the earth. Yeah. But the word of God says that they shall be called the sons of God. Right? Yes. Why would he say that? Because he did not want to say to a Jew and a Muslim that you'll be called sons, sons of, of God. God. Right. Because they aren't. Well, because they're not. <clears throat> now, trust me when I say... And I they believe, would take offense in, in that well, uh, well, you know, people take offense very, very easily. Yes. Because it says in Psalm 119, verse 165, that those who love thy law shall have great peace, and nothing shall offend them. If you're not living by, led by, the Spirit of God and the Word of God, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, then you're going to take offense at everything. Why do you think there are so many personal injury lawyers advertising all over the place, you know, sue somebody, sue somebody, okay? You can't be, a, who's the son of God? Well, Paul said in Romans, you know, those who are being led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. How can you expect, now I don't mean to offend anybody, but the truth is, how can a Muslim be called a son of God when he cannot be led by the Spirit of God, if you believe Scripture. You know, there's this great debate that seems to be raging in many parts of the world. You know, are they worshiping the same God? The simple fact of the matter is they are not. Mm -hmm. Because God cannot be divided. God cannot be saying one thing to one group and another thing to another group. That's not God. That's not what, if you believe that, you don't believe Scripture. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe Scripture, that's your choice. That's your choice. But don't, don't say that you do, and don't call yourself a Christian. Because you cannot be a Christian unless you are led by the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Okay. It's all about peace. Yes. That's what this whole study is about. But I want to read you something that God spoke more than, you know, let me go back 2,000 years, 2,500 years. Mm -hmm. And God spoke through the prophet Ezekiel. And listen to this. I'm going to read some verses from the 13th chapter of Ezekiel. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel, who prophesy and say to those who prophesy from their own inspiration, Listen to the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the foolish prophets who are following their own spirit and have seen nothing. They see falsehood and lying divinations who are saying, The Lord declares when the Lord has not sent them, yet they hope for the fulfillment of their word. It is definitely because they have misled my people by saying peace when there is no peace. And when anyone builds a wall, behold, they plaster over it with whitewash to tell those who plaster it with whitewash that it will fall. Thus I will spend my wrath on the prophets of Israel who prophesy to Jerusalem and who see visions of peace for her when there is no peace, declares the Lord God. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. God is a God of peace. But you cannot have peace on your terms. 
It's got to be on his terms. The Lord spoke to the prophet Isaiah, referring to those who are separated from him by sin, and said, they do not know the way of peace. Isaiah 59, 8. There is a way of peace. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way of peace. No Jesus, no peace. And you want to know something? That goes whether you're talking about Israel and the, and the Muslims, if you're talking about a husband and wife who are fighting, you, if it go, if husband, parents and children, mm -hmm. anybody that's at war with each other, the only solution is to everybody surrender to Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches and history demonstrates that enmity between men cannot be replaced by real peace until those men have made their own peace with God. Although their warfare may ebb and flow, mm -hmm. like the tides, and it does, yes. it will continue on and on and on. Now, I want to, let's take an example here from Scripture, and it's an important one. The angel of the Lord found Hagar. You know, Hagar was the servant of Abraham. Abram. 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 Yes. Let's yes. make sure we're right here. And Sarai. And God had spoken to Abram. I'm sure you know this account. I pray that you know this account. About he was going to give him a son of blessing. Mm -hmm. Of course, now they're both very old. And Hagar, uh, or Sarai, thinks this is a joke and laughs about it, right? But the angel of the Lord found the servant, Hagar, and spoke to her, telling her that her son Ishmael would be great. He'd multiply greatly. And that he, Ishmael, will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him. And he will live to the east of all of his brothers. Genesis 16, 12. Now, you know, both streams of, of Islam, the Sunni and Shia streams of Islam, agree that Ishmael, the son of Abram, is the father of Muhammad. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, I, mean, I, want to, I want to make sure that we're on the same page here. I'm going to read you from Genesis 16, 11, and 15. The angel of the Lord said to her further, Behold, this is talking to Hagar, mm -hmm. You are with child and you will bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has given heed to your affliction. And it goes on, So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram called the name of his son, who Hagar bore Ishmael. I have been, we've been in the Mideast, we've been all over, and people say, well, you know, the is, Islam and Christianity and Judaism, they all have the same root. They're all children of Abraham. That's not true. Ishmael was the son of Abram. God changed him, and when he changed him, he changed his name to Abraham. And, and later he would say, God would say to Abraham, Take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I always tell you, right? Mm -hmm. And then he goes on, he said, do not stretch out your hand against the lad and do nothing to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And he continues, and he said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. See, so you see that God saw that Abraham only had one son, and that was the son of the promise by Sarah, to whom the promise was made to Abraham and Sarah, and that was Isaac. Yes. Abram, not Abraham, was the father of Ishmael. Okay, I'm going to get back to the, the roots of this, talking about being a peacemaker. A peacemaker is a person or group and uh, that tries to make peace. I mean, especially by reconciling parties who are in disagreement, who are quarreling, who are fighting, right? Mm -hmm. So that person comes between those two parties and tries to reconcile them. Mm -hmm. So a peacemaker has to be able to speak to both parties. Right. I mean, that's simple logic, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the unsaved have no assurance of being heard by God other than a prayer of repentance. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about bringing peace between God and man, there can only be one peacemaker. 
There can only be. And that's what that's what the Word of God says. Paul wrote to Timothy and said, For there is one God and one mediator, one mediator also between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. First Timothy 2 5. There can only be one mediator. There can only be one peacemaker between God the Father and mankind. And that is his son, the man Christ Jesus. Because he is truly man and he is truly God. So he can bridge that gap between God and man. The only one. He's yes. the only one. Now I said, you know, that we have, last week I was talking about, we, well, we've been given a ministry of reconciliation. Yes, we, we can bring people to Jesus Christ. Yes. Can't bring them to God. We can't bring them to the Father. We can bring them, we can bring people, and this is the ministry that we have of reconciliation, is to bring people to Jesus Christ. Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden. And when, we, when people reconcile with Jesus, he, he reconciles, reconciles them to the Father. Yes. Jesus can be reconciled with man. Jesus can minister that to the Father. Okay? That's why it says, uh, that therefore, he, talking about Jesus, mm -hmm. is able to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 7.25. Jesus Christ is the intercessor. Jesus Christ is the mediator. He is the only one that can bring peace between fallen man and God Almighty, who is without any, <laughs> without any flaw, right? And Jesus does that yes. by taking the flaw, the sin of man, bearing it upon himself. He who knew no sin became sin for our sake. He took our sin. He, the unblemished lamb, mm -hmm. the sacrifice, and he can go to God the Father. He is that bridge between God and man. No Jesus, no peace. It is, it is a foolish belief of the world that they can find peace outside of... You know, you, mankind can find peace without having, first of all, found peace with God. It cannot be done. And if you think it can, show me the time in history when it was, all right? When the Son of God was born in Bethlehem, According to the promise, in the fullness of time, the angels and the heavenly host rejoiced, praising God and saying, Peace on earth. We've been given this great gift, the Prince of Peace. And as Jesus would then later say, he said, When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. That's Proverbs. Our ministry is peace on earth. Peace on earth starts with warfare in the spirit, okay? Yes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places, Ephesians 6, 12. And the weapons of our warfare, you know, we're called, us Christians, mm -hmm. we're not called to pick up guns. No. We're called to pick up the sword of the Lord, the word of God, all right? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4. You see, we have a different ministry than the governors, than the world does. Mm -hmm. Their ministry is, they were sent by God for the punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do right. Mm -hmm. That's in 1 Peter. That's their ministry, is to deal with those worldly evildoers. Our ministry is to deal with worldly evildoers, to bring them into reconciliation with God the Father. Okay? You've got to understand that we are not called to war according to the flesh. Period. There is no exception. There is no time when that word of God is not true all of a sudden. Maybe that has to be done, but it's not to be done by us. Our ministry, God has not equipped us with the weapons of the, with the flesh. He has equipped us with what? The Word of God, the love of God. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And, that, and you know, Paul says in Ephesians that the, that sword of the Lord, that weapon, is the Word of God. Do you believe that? Yes. <laughs> Do you believe it? I, I'll tell you. You know, I, I may have shared this before. Alice and I, a number of years ago, we were preparing to go back overseas again. And we had something to do uh, 
with a, a government agency. I really don't recall what it was. We had to take care of filling out some forms. And knowing what it's like to go to a government office where people are lined up and, you know, it's a bureaucratic kind of situation. We went early in the morning before it opened to be online and get in and get it taken care of. Well, we got there early, and yet in front of this building, I mean, there was a line of people, right? And they're all waiting for the, and it was a few minutes before the doors opened, so they're all standing outside waiting for the, for open. And there are two policemen outside this government building, and they're walking up and down the line, and they're saying to everybody, you know, you, first of all, there's no smoking in the building, and you can't have any weapons in the building. If you have any weapons, do not bring them into this building. So I called one of the officers over, and I said, listen, I've got a problem. He said, what are you talking about? I said, well, I have a weapon, and I can't, I, I, I can't put it down. I can't. And he said, what are you talking about? I carry it with me all I the time. I said, I carry it with me all the time. I said, I have the sword of the Lord. I have the word of God, and I can't put it down. And it's like his, first, his reaction was like, what, what, what? And then he calls over the other cop. He says, wait, you got to hear this. you got to hear this. <laughs> and it turns out that they were both Christians. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so it's got to be a reality. This is, you know, our faith. And the Word of God is not some fable that we can play with. It is, it is the reality of our lives. And it has to be the guide for our lives. Thy Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It guides every step of our life. And when we are guided by the Word of God, you know, did Jesus say or did he not say that it's the Holy Spirit who will be sent to lead you into all truth? So when you couple that Word of God with the Spirit of God, okay, and when you couple the Spirit of God with the Scriptures, it becomes the Word of God. Yes. That becomes your God. And you know what it says in Romans? Those who are led by the Spirit, they are the sons, the children of God. Coincidentally to this? No. Because you know what? You can't be a peacemaker without being led by the Spirit of God. And when you are led by the Spirit of God, you are a child of God. That's, that's the manifestation. Okay. Now, you know... Most respected Bible commentators, I'm talking about Barnes, Henry, Matt, uh, you know, Matthew Henry, Gill, Wycliffe, etc., etc., they state that the primary focus of the verse here, for the ruler does, you know, he has a sword, is to bring, uh, bring peace between men. And I say, again, that because there can be no peace between men till there's peace by God, those men have to be have the focus of Jesus, his teaching, is what will bring the message of peace. Mm -hmm. Okay? Do I sound like I'm trying to pick on somebody when I say, think about what I what I quoted? And it's a quote. This is I'm not making this up. When Pope Francis went over to Israel and tried to bring the Palestinians and the Israelites together and said, Well, we've got to put aside the thing that divides us. And the thing that divides him is Jesus Christ. You can't have peace without Jesus Christ. Right. It'll never happen. I want to tell you something. I have found peace with a number of Muslims mm -hmm. because they've accepted Jesus Christ. And you want to know something? They're not my, I don't treat them like they're enemies if they haven't accepted Jesus That's Christ. Right. I, I don't, I'm not going to bring hatred to any man. All right? But the fact of the matter is you'll never, have, you'll never be able to have that relationship with anybody. You'll never have a relationship with anybody without conflict and warfare unless you are both agreed on the saving power, the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And that goes between a man and a woman who want to get married. If one yes. of them is saved and one of them is not, you know what? You're headed for warfare. That's right. You're headed it's for battle. warfare. It'll be a battle. It'll be a battle. Absolutely. You can't have a peaceful relationship. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have a loving we Christians have the power to love our enemies. Yes. That doesn't mean that your enemies have the power to love you back. Mm -hmm. Because like Paul said in these perilous last days, men will be lovers of self. They'll be lovers of money. They'll be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They're going to be self-focused. The first thing I want to tell you about being a Christian is you've got to learn to deny yourself. That's right. Your focus has to start with Jesus Christ. And then from there, where does it go? You, you love other people. It flows out. That's, the, that's the great, the new commandment, that you love others as, as, as he has, as he's loved us, right? If anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things have passed away. The old, new things have come. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself 
through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. It's got to be through Christ. Amen. Through Christ. Amen. You know, if the Secretary of State from the United States would go to another nation and say, listen, you guys, you need to accept Jesus Christ, then maybe we'll find peace. Well, obviously, they're not going to do that. And obviously, if they don't do that, they're never going to find and make peace. I mean, you know, I, I'm i 72 years old. When, when has there been a time of peace in my lifetime? And how well are we doing with all of the peace efforts? Not well. The Russian president, I think, or prime minister, Medvedev, just said the other day, we're entering into a new Cold, Cold War. War. Mm. After all of these years, it doesn't. warfare doesn't go away. Enmity doesn't go away mm. until you have surrendered yourself to the Prince of Peace and let him deal and work his love through you to others, okay? Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. Yes. As though God were making an appeal through us, we beg you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God. It is the only way to peace. Yeah. The world can chase peace and say peace, peace, but there is no peace. peace. There is no peace. We're to imitate Christ. That's what Paul wrote to the Ephesians and said, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. Ephesians 5.1. But it goes on in verse 2 to say, And walk in love. Just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God, a fragrant aroma. God is a peacemaker. Yes. He is the Prince of Peace. <clears throat> he is peace. And without him, there is no peace. Love. Lord, our victor evermore. evermore. Hallelujah. You're so right, baby. Peace. There are six things that the Lord hates, yea, even seven that are an abomination to him. One who spreads strife among brothers mm -hmm. is one of those on the hit parade. All right? And lest you think it's only between brothers, look at what he just said before that. He said, a worthless person, a wicked man, is the one who walks with a perverse mouth, who winks his eyes, who signals with his feet, who points with his fingers, who with perversity in his heart continually devises evil, who spreads strife. If you don't have three, if you don't have that right relationship with Jesus Christ, you can't have a right relationship with the Father, and you can't spread that right relationship with the Father. Jesus said, peace. I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Mm -hmm. John 14, 27. This is a good time to remember that the peace of God is supposed to reign in your heart, and you have no need of being fearful of anything. Do not let your heart be troubled, he said. Mm -hmm. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. John 14, 1 and 3. We're coming to a time of great peace. We're coming to a time of eternal peace. You'll hear it. You'll know it when you hear hoofbeats in the sky. Amen. You'll know it when you hear that heavenly trumpet. You'll know it when you hear the shout from the archangel of God. And it's coming soon. Hallelujah. Yes. And Father, we thank you that it's almost time, Lord God, that the clock that's ticking and the clock that sounds is sounding your return. In Jesus' name, Father, we rejoice in that. And use us, Lord, for the glory of your name. God bless you and goodbye. Till next time.